case you didn't know, uh, there are raffle tickets for sale benefiting the Friends of Woodbury Elementary School. Uh, the drawing will be after lunch. There's a $25 gift certificate deposit pie and a $25 gift certificate to the Galaxy Bookshop. For those of you here for the first time or who need a refresher course, uh, I'm going to briefly go over the ground rules of the meeting. Uh, Robert's rules of orders, Robert's rules of order are the basic rules of order for this meeting, except where Vermont law takes precedence. You can't change Vermont state statute, but you can change uh, Robert's rules of order with a two-thirds vote if you desire. An article must be moved and then seconded and then restated by the moderator before it's under consideration and debate on the article may begin. Articles may have only one amendment at a time and the amendments to an article may have only one amendment at a time associated with them. After you've spoken once on a particular article, uh, you may not be recognized a second time during discussion of that article until after all other voters who wish to speak on the issue for the first time have an opportunity to do so. Uh, you may be allowed to speak a third time if the voters agree to suspend the rules by a two-thirds vote or through unanimous consent. Uh, if there's no objection, uh, the speaker's time will be limited to two minutes. Uh, you can ask uh, the body for an extension of time uh, to speak more. Vermont state law provides for a paper ballot vote on the request of seven voters, uh, either before or even after a voice vote or a division of the House. Uh, debate may be cut off by a motion to call the question with a second and then a two-thirds vote. Uh, before you yell out that you want to call the question, please remember you have to be recognized and take your turn. All motions and remarks and discussion should be addressed to the moderator. I'll do my best to recognize you in the order that you've uh, raised your hands. After being recognized, please stand up. Uh, come to the microphone, if you will, or talk very loudly. Uh, uh, say your name and... Uh, for the record, and then speak. Uh, it's particularly important to use the microphone. I don't know if you've been listening to the past uh, uh, or seeing the past uh, videos of this meeting on HCTV, but sometimes there's really not a lot of volume uh, and it's hard to hear. And please either speak loudly or, or come up to the microphone, especially if you're in the Hinterlands, North Woodbury. <laughs> Please tell me if you feel I'm ruling improperly, you have the right to challenge the moderator's rulings. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask those of you who are not registered voters, not registered voters in the town of Woodbury to raise your hands. Unless there's a suspension of the rules, uh, you may not vote or speak on the articles. If there's uh, no objection, we'll move to Article 1 of the warning and elect moderator. Steve Freihofner has been nominated. Are there other nominations for moderator, town moderator? You'll notice that the school moderator is a separate election later in this meeting. Any other nominations? Uh, if hearing none, we'll close the nominations and proceed to a vote. All those in favor of Steve Freihofner to be town moderator for town meetings for the ensuing year, please say aye. All those opposed? And Steve Freihofner has been elected town moderator. I'm sorry? It uh, must have been an echo. Uh, has been elected town moderator for one year. Thank you. 
Let's turn to Article 2. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 2 of the warning? Is that you, Paul? There's a motion to accept the report. Is there a second? Ron Wells and Kim Silt, second. Please listen to Article 2 of the warning. What action will the town take in regard to the printed report of the town officials for the year ending December 31, 2018? Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion of that article? You raised your hand, uh, Eric, uh, indicating that you're not a town resident. So before you speak, you're going to have to ask for uh, the body to give permission to Eric to speak. It takes a two-thirds Vote. You wish to speak on this motion, I take it, specifically to the printed report. Well, Eric, who's not a registered voter, wants to speak to a point of information. He can do that if you allow him to by two thirds vote. Although, did you want to say something? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Eric? I was just wondering what uh, that means to accept. We accepted this, this article. I don't understand what it means to accept it. Uh, it means that uh, you accept it as presented. That means you can talk about it later if you want. You can challenge part of it, but you accept it as presented. So the way that it's written, the presentation of the written word. Here. Exactly. Okay. Just, just want to clarify. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Any further discussion on Article Two? Any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. Please listen to the article. What action will the town take in regard to the printed report of the town officials for the year ending December 31, 2018? If you vote yes, you accept the report as printed and presented. If you vote no, you do not accept the report. All those in favor of accepting the report say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And the report is accepted. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 3 of the town warning? The first part of which is to elect a town clerk for three years. Are there nominations? Diana Paduzzi is nominated. Are there further nominations? If there are none, we'll close the nominations and proceed to a vote. All those in favor of Diana Paduzzi as town clerk for a term of three, three years, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And Diana Paduzzi is elected town clerk for three years. The next office to be elected is that of select board member for three years. Susan. Paul Cerruti is nominated. Are there any other nominations? Second. Any other nominations for select board member for three years? If there are no more nominations, we'll close the nominations. And you 
usually the practice is and uh, that if somebody does not uh, wish to accept the nomination, they say so or they leave quickly. <laughs> Which will not prevent their election, by the way. <laughs> All right, so this requires a paper ballot. Is there any motion, Michael? The motion is to have the clerk cast one ballot for Paul Cerruti and seconded to fulfill the requirement of a paper ballot. All those in favor of the clerk casting one ballot for Paul Cerruti for select board for three years, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And Paul Cerruti is elected to the select board for a term of three years. Are there other nominations for Lister? Other nominations for Lister? Hearing? Skip? Michael McGlynn is nominated. Are there any other nominations for Lister for three years? Any other nominations? If not, we'll close the nominations and I'll ask the clerk to prepare ballots for voting. To vote, uh, write the name of your preferred candidate on the ballot and then uh, bring the ballot up front and deposit it into the ballot box. Mary Gangemi, Gangemi, and Michael McGlynn are the nominees. You may only vote if you are a registered voter in Woodbury. Please listen to the results of your vote for Lister for a term of three years. There were 68, there were 68 total votes cast. Mary Gangemi, 45. Mike McGlynn, 23 votes. Mary Gangemi is elected Lister for three years. Uh, before we proceed, I should mention that you may notice a document circulating for signatures uh, around the body. Uh, it seeks volunteers to make pies for the pie breakfast, which will be Saturday the 16th of March from 8.30 to 10.30 in the morning. Pies will be collected the night before, right here, uh, between five and eight. So do watch out for that uh, circulating document. Live music? Woodbury Broadband. Woodbury Broadband, very well. Thank you, Carolyn. Let's proceed uh, to the next election, and that is for the position of auditor for three years. This also requires a paper ballot. Susan. I'd like to nominate Thomas Skip Lindsay. Second. Thomas Lindsay is nominated and seconded. Are there any more nominations for auditor for three years? Nominations for auditor for three years. Hearing none, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote, Michael. Uh, 
Was that you, Roy? Yes, it was. It was a motion for the secretary to cast one ballot for Thomas Lindsay for the uh, position of auditor for three years. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor of having the clerk cast one ballot for Thomas Lindsay for auditor for three years, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And Thomas Lindsay is elected auditor for three years. The next position is delinquent tax collector. Are there nominations for delinquent tax collector? Skip. Nominate uh, Ron Wells. Ron Wells is nominated. Are there other nominations for delinquent tax collector? Other nominations? Hearing none, we'll close the nominations. You don't need seconds for nominations, but they are appreciated by the nominee, believe me. <laughs> All those in favor of Ron Wells for delinquent tax collector for a term of one year, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? And Ron Wells is elected delinquent tax collector. I'm amazed that we almost got through this <laughs> without somebody mentioning that. Well, it's up for debate whether the correct title here is delinquent tax collector or collector of delinquent taxes, but we'll leave that for next year, I guess. The next office to be elected is that of grand juror for a term of one year. Susan. I'd like to nominate Retta Dunlap. Retta Dunlap is nominated. Are there other nominations for grand juror for one year? Any other nominations? Hearing none, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Retta Dunlap for the position of grand juror for one year, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it for Retta and Retta is elected uh, grand juror for a term of one year. The next office is town law agent. I'd like to recommend uh, or nominate Retta Dunlap. Retta Dunlap is nominated. Are there other nominations? Other nominations? If there are no other nominations, we'll close nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Retta Dunlap for town law agent for one year, please say aye. All those opposed? And Retta Dunlap is elected town law agent for a term of one year. The next office is for cemetery commissioner for a term of five years. Cemetery commissioner for a term of five years. Are there nominations for cemetery commissioner? Nominations for cemetery commissioner. Would you say the name again, please? Lee Seidenberg. Lee Seidenberg. Has everybody met Lee Seidenberg? Would you stand up, please? Are there other nominations for cemetery commissioner? Other nominations? Hearing none, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Lee Seidenberg to be cemetery commissioner for five years, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? And Lee Seidenberg is elected cemetery commissioner for five years. The next position is that of library trustee for a term of one year. Library trustee for a term of one year. Are there nominations for library trustee? Yes, Ginger. Ann Phelps is nominated. Pelts. And seconded. Are there other nominations? Other nominations for library trustee for one year? If not, we'll close nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Ann Pelts to be library trustee for one year, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? Ann Peltz has elected, has been elected for library trustee for one year. 
The next position is library trustee for two years. Are there nominations for library trustee for two years? Library trustee for two years. Cindy? Jack Travelstad is nominated. And seconded, Jack. Are there other nominations? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Jack Travelstad to be library trustee for a term of two years, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And Jack Travelstad is elected library trustee for two years. The next position to be elected is that of agent to transfer real estate. Agent to transfer real estate for a term of one year. Diana Paduzzi is nominated. Are there other nominations for agent to transfer real estate? Agent to transfer real estate. Hearing none, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Diana Paduzzi to be agent to transfer real estate. For a term of one year, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And Diana Paduzzi is elected agent to transfer real estate. Let's proceed then to Article 4. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 4 of the warning? The article is moved. Is there a second? Skip Marchese. How do I say it right? Marcassani. One day I'll know all your names and be able to pronounce them correctly. Please listen to Article 4 of the warning. Shall the town have its taxes paid to the town treasurer as tax receiver 60 days after tax bills are mailed? The estimated due date is going to be October 24th, 2019, it is thought. Taxes would then become delinquent and be turned over to the collector of delinquent taxes for collection with a penalty that increases by one half a percent per month of delinquency to a maximum of 6% for one full year or more of delinquency, and interest of 6% per year or one half percent per month. What is your pleasure? Is there any discussion with regard to that article? Uh, we have a non-resident, registered, non-registered voter requesting to speak. Uh, it, that needs the approval of two thirds of this body. All those in favor? of allowing Eric Walsenf to speak. Please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Uh, sounds close to me, so I'm gonna ask for a division of the house. That means I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand for whatever way you wish to vote. So, I'll ask you again, all those in favor all those in favor of letting Eric speak, please raise your hand.
Not good enough to estimate. Put your hands up, please. In this case, you can put your hands down in the back. In this case, it doesn't make a difference. And I'll tell you why. Before you stepped up to the microphone, there were 31 votes in favor and 28 opposed. So even if you step back, the body would have given permission for Eric to speak. Oh, I'm sorry, two thirds is right. It's not a simple majority, it's two-thirds. Uh, there's 28, uh, 31 in favor, 28 opposed. Uh, the body has not given you permission to speak, Eric. So we'll proceed uh, with the article. Is there any discussion on Article 4? Any discussion? Any further discussion on Article 4? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Article 4, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Article 4 is passed. And uh, I'd like to thank the body for helping keeping me on track here. Let's proceed to Article 5. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 5 of the warning? Motion to pass. Is there a second? second? Motion passed and seconded. Please listen to the article. Will the voters authorize and empower the select board to borrow money on the credit of the town? Is there any discussion on Article 5? Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the vote. Please listen to the article again. Will the voters authorize and empower <clears throat> the select board to borrow money on the credit of the town? If you vote aye, you approve of that article. If you vote no, you do not approve. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and Article 5 is passed. Article 6, let's move to Article 6. What's your pleasure with respect to Article 6 of the warning? Is there a motion? Motion is moved, is there a second? Second. And seconded. Please listen to Article 6 of the warning. Will the voters authorize and empower the select board to borrow money to pay current expenses in anticipation of taxes raised and uncollected? Is there any discussion, any discussion of Article 6? Any discussion? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. If you vote yes, if you vote aye, you do authorize the select board to borrow money and pay current expenses in anticipation of taxes raised and uncollected. If you vote no, you do not approve of that action. All those in favor of Article 6, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and the article is passed. Moving on to Article 7. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 7 of the town warning? Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Please listen to Article 7. Shall the town appropriate $17,850 to the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department to be added to the truck replacement fund? Is there any discussion, any discussion of this article? Uh, Eric is requesting to speak again. 
we need to go through the exercise, and if you want Eric to speak, he'll have to have two-thirds approval from this board. We'll try it by voice vote, voice, <laughs> voice vote this time. Say that again, Chibia. I don't understand. Eric is on the checklist. Well, if he's if he's on the checklist, then he's uh, he's authorized to speak at these meetings. So, Eric, I apologize. Well, he's on the list. We all know it. So, you know, it's a courtesy to check in and acknowledge who you are. But Eric is Eric, and he's a resident of the town. Eric, will you check in? Did I check in? You stopped here and you said you didn't think you were registered and you didn't hear it. But you are So I checked in. And she checked me out. I do have a little Wallace Senf. Did I pronounce that correctly? I'm not doing too well on pronunciation today. Okay, so he's checked in. He's on the grand list. Is that correct? He's on the checklist. He's on the voter checklist. Eric, what do you say? Um, I'm just wondering why. First of all, I don't understand the, the symbol in front of this number, which I guess we say the dollar sign. So in this meeting, we're dealing with a budget. Are we dealing with legal tender or lawful money? Uh, we're dealing with, with what the article says. So what does that indicate? Legal tender? It indicates $17,850. Point of clarification: Does the dollar sign indicate legal tender or lawful money? Uh, my function here is to run the meeting and not necessarily give legal opinions. So I will have to leave that query unanswered. So how are we supposed to make a decision as to whether to bring this article forward if we don't know what kind of currency or funds we're dealing with? Well, the article has been forwarded, it's been moved and seconded, and now we're up to a vote on it. Actually, we're at the discussion stage. So if you have any doubts about it, I would suggest you follow your inner wisdom and vote accordingly. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to then assume, since there's nobody here who has information on how we are categorizing these funds, whether they come from the Federal Reserve or the Treasury, and that there is a difference, and if we don't understand what we're doing, I think it's, it would behoove us as a community to understand how we are extracting our value from this community, where it's going, and how we benefit or don't benefit as a community, supportive community in this respect. So my, I'm just going to say, I assume we've been using Federal Reserve funds prior, and so we continue to, so um, if that's the case, that is legal tender. Uh, I believe. Sorry. I haven't recognized you. Sir, you're next. I just believe that it's universally accepted that the dollar sign means American dollars. And I think this discussion is uh, trivial and interrupted. Susan. I agree that it's very interrupted. And I believe that if he has a particular question concerning our treasury. We have a wonderful treasurer named Brandy Smith. He should approach her on a sidebar at maybe one of our breaks. And um, thank you very much. Is there any further discussion on Article 7? Any further discussion on Article 7? We'll proceed to the vote then. Please listen to Article 7. 
shall the town appropriate $17,850 to the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department to be added to the truck replacement fund. If you vote yes, you approve of that amount being transferred to the fire department. Uh, if you vote no, you do not approve. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and Article 7 is passed. On to Article 8. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 8 of the warning? So moved. Article 8 is moved. Is there a second? and seconded. Please listen to Article 8. Shall the town appropriate $73,727 to fund the operations of the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2019? Is there any discussion of Article 8? Eric? Is the, uh, the fire department the 501c3? We're a 501c4. 501c4? Is that uh, a, 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 so you can accept donations? Correct. So um, I'm wondering why we are allocating so much money in these three articles towards this one entity when I know that there are parts of this community which can use that money immediately rather than projecting out for possible emergencies in the future. Is there a response to that question? You're Mary, I'm going to put you on the list. There are other people who are going to speak for you. I guess there's no response, Eric. Yes, in the back. is a substantial amount of money for, for, for one year. Uh, and callous, it would appear, and, and I would welcome somebody from the fire department to respond, but it appears that callous is slowly backing out of their financial commitment to the town of Woodbury. And the way things are going, I don't know how much longer we can support the department with these kind of resources which are climbing substantially each year. And I would ask somebody to address that. Thank you. Mary? I had 
an emergency at my house and the fire department came and resolved it. Um, I also had, you know, my wife fell and terribly injured herself and they were right there. So I have no problem with the fire department. But I caution us against ripping back money when we know that federal and state governments are not stepping up to the plate and we don't want to find ourselves in a situation where there's no recourse. If we self-fund our own fire department and they are held accountable, there's no monkey stuff going on here. This is a department that's been here for the residents of Woodbury. They outreach to other communities when they need help. They always show up. And it's kind of like the, the education argument. Cut costs, keep quality. It doesn't work. you got to put the money there. That's why people are paid a lot of money to do really good, stressful jobs. If you take the money away, you're putting people in a position of deprivation and resentment. That's human nature. And I really don't feel that it's appropriate for someone who's not in our community to stand up and completely disrupt the, the hearing. If you have something to say, we would love to hear it. But to stand up time after time, just so you can get your hand up, and we can approve of your voice, it's kind of ridiculous. Mary, I want to uh, so, interject here and uh, caution the members that uh, when you speak at this meeting, this is not uh, an opportunity for uh, a personal Discussions this is not a personal, personal thing. This is not comments. A, everyone in this room and we know is that being delayed because one individual is hell bent on doing a certain thing. I don't know what the agenda is. I don't know what the cause is. But you can even say to me, cut it out. I think we can say to cut it out. But back to the fire department. You, you could not keep it personal by addressing me, which is what you have done, and I appreciate that. That's correct. All right, Paul, you're next. So, so I call your attention to the Chief's report on page 52. Uh, Callis hasn't been stepping away. Um, they're looking at the same article for the new capital replacement fund is being contemplated in their town meeting today. And if you go down, it's one, two, three, four uh, paragraphs down. It talks about the budget. Uh, there's increased... Uh, much more than ours, so because of the way we allocate the, the distribution, so that went up for them, less for us. So they haven't stepped back; they're still stepping up to the plate and doing doing it because they realize they need the service. Uh, as to the cost of service in proportion to its value, um, as we worked hard over the last, it took about ten years to improve our town's ISO rating, which we talked about last year. That has a direct impact on your insurance premiums. I don't know if any of you have experienced this yet, but um, I see it for community members in Callis or Woodbury where their house is more than 10 miles, or excuse me, five miles from the fire station where they either can't get fire insurance, which means if you own your house, you aren't protected, or you can't get it, which means no mortgage because you don't have fire insurance, or they're being forced into Lloyd's of London. So the reason to keep a, a good quality service is to keep those as viable options for yourself. It makes financing things almost impossible. Um, it's, it's not quite that simple, but that's a simpler explanation of what goes on in the background. Just by having the fire department here and having people willing to be trained, go through the, the, the stuff to keep our insurance rates where they are is a big deal. Because uh, I know mine's about 600 a year, and someone told me that uh, they couldn't get regular insurance because they were too far from the fire station, and their, their bill they were going to get from Lloyd's of London was 2900 So there's a lot of investment that could be made locally that would offset that. So that fair? I have to I have to recognize you and please ask your question for the moderator. Ms. Moderator, I just would like to know would, would this right, 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 right. Mr. Moderator, I, I would just like to know what uh, increase this would be per thousand dollars to the townspeople on, on their property taxes. I don't, it doesn't reflect that in any way here with this, this increase with this replacement fund. Is there is there an answer uh, to I that? Answer. I can't. I, uh, again, not contemplating this article. This article was a very low increase, two and a half percent, mostly absorbed by insurance. Most of our cost increases are not things we can control: insurance, fuel, uh, 
all those type of things, workman's comp. Um, I, I ran the numbers on my house, uh, and best I could do, and again, the listeners or somebody might know more than I do, but it was about two cents on the tax rate for the, the next article, which we aren't discussing. This, not, this, this wouldn't have a big impact what we're voting on here. Uh, the next article would have about two cents, make about $30 difference in my tax bill. Which is worth about two thirty-five. If that's something uh, that's going to be covered on the next article, maybe Th this article doesn't raise our taxes. Maybe you want to reserve question, Eric. Thank you, Steve, for being here in this discussion. Um, I'd like to clarify with you that. I'm not opposed to any amount of money being spent on resources that this town needs and wants. I'm just looking at the fact that in my situation, I don't have the ability to come up with resources in whatever kind of currency this is, whether it's legal tender or lawful money. And that I'm just trying to look at creative ways of funding the good work that our car company does it is needed. I'm not opposed to the fire company. I'm opposed to the way that our value is being extracted by the monetary system. And I'm trying to look at maybe creative ways that this community can come together and not continue down this road of having taxes go up when, when our rates in the workforce don't go up and goods and services go up. And so I'm just looking at where we've come from in terms of the monetary system, our, our governance, and what we do at this town meeting. And I think that we have the ability here as a town to come together and solve problems and not wait for some entity outside of us, which seems to have gone to greater places than we are. And so I'm saying, let's, let's look at our monetary system and say, what is this money unit that we're using? And can we better um, bring money in through donations from corporations rather than taxing residents here that don't have the ability to fund that? Is there any further discussion on Article 8? Article 8. <laughs> Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. Please listen to the article you're going to vote on. Shall the town appropriate $73,727 to fund the operations of the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2019? Uh, an I vote means you approve of this appropriation. A no vote means you do not approve of this appropriation. All those in favor of Article 8, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and Article 8 is passed. Let's move on to Article 9. Shall the town appropriate $31,000 to the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department to fund the Capital Replacement Fund? What is your pleasure with respect to Article 9? Is there a motion? Who moved it? Is there a second? Second. And seconded. No, um, sir, your name? Gary Smith. Gary Smith. Wow, it's been years, Gary. I'm sorry. You probably didn't recognize me either. Jeez. All right, the article is uh, moved and seconded. I'm required to read the article a second time. Shall the town appropriate $31,000 to the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department to fund the Capital Replacement Fund? Is there a discussion on this article? Paul. Currently, we've been funding the trucks through leases. We have a lease for engine four, which is uh, six, seven years old. We leased, also leased the new pickup. We, we borrowed 36,000, I want to say, and we raised about 12 to pay for the last vehicle, which we got last year. Our feeling in this is, is to, it's not the best way to do business. Our, our hope was to, to transfer to a capital replacement fund because we have other needs that are coming up. 
Uh, this year, our self-contained breathing apparatus, which we got through a grant in 2004, all of the air cylinders are becoming due um, at the cost of, a, they're anywhere between $800 and $1,000 per air cylinder because they're no longer allowed to be transferred on the highway. So that's one item. We have 26 of those we have to buy, so that turns into a $25,000 bill that we got to deal with. That's one item. We're also looking at that breathing apparatus is uh, 20, or excuse me, 15 years old right now, and, and we need a plan moving forward how we're going to replace those expensive air packs because um, the grant money's really dried up. Or in the early 2000s, 9/11 had just happened. There was a lot of money, and we were very successful to get some of this equipment. But now it's getting to be time where we need to start thinking how are we going to replace it. And they cost anywhere between eight and twelve thousand per unit, uh, and we have about 14 of those. So, and they're absolutely necessary in today's environment because the things that are burning in our homes, we can't breathe. It will kill you. So, so it's, it's an important step, not only in funding our apparatus, which it contemplates, and just to be clear on this, the current truck fund uh, uh, borrowing would be completed in around five years. Uh, what we would want to do is get rid of that and then just stick with the capital replacement fund. So um, this, this, uh, printout that you see contemplates also reducing our fleet size by one vehicle because we're trying to do that to save some cost for it for a number of reasons but we're trying to consolidate and make things cost less but sometimes you got to spend a little bit to get there because nothing will nothing we have right now will currently fit the need to combine two trucks into one so um, and that's that's our proposal it's a legitimate conversation as far as which way to pay we could come back with a with borrowing again which again the, the borrowing cost for the last vehicle is 138,000 and again, my opinion, this is why we put this forward. And again, Chance is our president. He was going to be here uh, talking about this, but he's in Calais, so you get me today. Sorry. Um, it was to, to move away from borrowing, uh, and, and that was our hope. And it would also give us a, a means to fund some of these other things that we're going to have to do coming up. So I'll answer any questions, but I'll stop. Is there any further discussion on Article 9? Tim. I'm Tim Appleton from Town Farm Road. Um, just a point of clarity, Paul. So in five years, um, the existing truck replacement for 17850 is that going to be assimilated into the 31,000? No, we would, that would go away. That's our plan, so that to go away. It's a little bitter pill we've got to eat between now and then because that's where we are. But it would, that's where we move over to the, this, this money would drop into our budget next year. We wanted to keep it separate this year so that people would understand what it was and what we were voting for. And that, that would be in our budget next year. And then in five years, we would not be asking for the 17500 uh, That would go away. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion on Article 9? Article 9. Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. If you vote aye on this article, you are in favor of the appropriation. If you vote no, you're not in favor of the appropriation. So I'll call the question. All those in favor of Article 9, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it, and Article 9 is passed. Recognize Susan Martin. I'd like to make a motion we take a break and listen to our representatives who have just walked in the door. Thank you. If there's no objection uh, to proceeding with the orders of the day, then uh, we'll proceed with hearing from our representatives uh, to Montpelier. There are Avram Pratt and Seth Yakovon. No. <laughs> What's the. David. I'll get the names right eventually. Thank you and uh, good morning. I'm uh, Avram Pat, um, and uh, we're, uh, we're Dave and I are making uh, the rounds today. Uh, it's a it's it's a long way from Elmore to here, as as you as you may know. Um, the um, th I am uh, in th this term. Uh, I am serving on the uh, Energy and Technology Committee. That is a very big change from. 
uh, where I was two sessions ago in my previous term when I was uh, on the health care committee. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting a kind of full, some of the full range of issues before, uh, before the legislature. Um, in the, up until now, up until the break where we're not in session uh, this week, most of us on committees and in the House we're only on one committee, we are uh, kind of locked in our little committee rooms and we are uh, dealing with those issues that, that are under the, the purview of, of our committee, sometimes uh, struggling to find out what is happening in the committee room um, next door. But now that we're, uh, when, when we come back, um, more and more bills will be coming out of the various committees with recommendations going to the floor and we'll be spending a lot more time uh, in session on the floor actually voting on bills. Up until this time, um, we have not voted on a whole lot of bills yet because p committees have been busy um, getting ready to send stuff to the, to the floor. So I want to say a little bit about uh, what's happening in the Energy and Technology Committee, which is a, a relatively new committee, was formed just last session. Um, on the energy side, which is uh, a lot of my, my personal background, um, uh, we are dealing with uh, issues of uh, renewable energy, um, uh, energy efficiency and conservation, and climate change. Um, we will be, uh, I expect, uh, sending some bills to the full house uh, uh, starting uh, in, in the coming weeks because up until now, uh, we've been focused uh, almost entirely uh, on broadband. Um, and last week we voted out a bill, uh, a, a comprehensive bill that kind of puts together the elements of several separate bills that had been uh, introduced. Um, to try to uh, really put some more focus and put some resources behind uh, broadband expansion, which as, as you know, um, uh, affects or doesn't affect uh, rural towns and rural communities uh, greatly because it, the service is either um, uh, not very good compared to the rest of uh, Vermont or the rest of the country, uh, or in some cases non-existent. Um, the, the, the problem, of course, is if, uh, if companies could make money getting uh, high-speed internet to the last mile on the back road, they would have done that already, and, and, and you can't. And so uh, that's why some public effort and public support um, is needed. So the bill that uh, is coming out um, uh, does put some financial resources into providing uh, grants for uh, planning and business plan development, encourages uh, communities uh, to either on their own if they're large enough or in what's called communication union districts, uh, getting together with some neighboring towns, um, perhaps partnering with um, uh, uh, private, some private uh, broadband fiber uh, companies that exist. Uh, there's a section on and looking at how um, regulated electric utilities might play uh, a, a role uh, in all of that. Um, for the first time, uh, it would, and, and, and this is actually in the, in, uh, the governor's uh, recommendation, put some money into VITA, the Vermont Economic Development Authority, uh, to lend money uh, for broadband expansion. Um, so uh, it's, 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 it's a slow push. We have to debate a lot by what is the standard we're trying to get um, uh, people who, have, who are underserved, at how good can we, can we make it because we can't, um, we're not gonna get to the point where uh, people on the, uh, at the end of a dirt road um, uh, in a rural town are going to have the same uh, upload and download speeds as people in the big city. It's, it's not, you know, so what is the standard that, that we, is achievable in the reasonably near, near future? Um, so that's, that's that. The one other thing I want to say more generally is um, in, in Vermont, and I, I said this in the fall and, and last summer as well when I was campaigning, uh, we're dealing with a situation 
where the, the federal government is stepping back in big ways from things that the federal government has been involved in, and that, that involves funding. Uh, one example Dave gave in, in one of our, our earlier stops was home health agencies, and I think a million dollars of federal funds that, that they're not going to be getting. That's just one example. Um, so the, the federal government is stepping back from funding programs. It's stepping, it's stepping back in terms of its regulatory role on environmental regulations. And the question for us in Vermont and at the State House is what, if anything, can Vermont do about that? There may be some things that we can't do anything about. There may be some things that we can do something about, but not, not put back everything that, that, that was pulled back. And those are the kind, and, 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 and can we fit that into the budget? And do we need to raise new revenue for those things? That's, that's before we were even thinking about n new ideas that some of us would like to do, we're, we're dealing with the, the con those consequences. Um, and it also affects, uh, I've, I've heard, had a few uh, comments very recently from people in, in our house district um, it's tax time. People are doing their taxes, and as um, uh, middle and moderate income people all across the country are discovering in very large numbers, they're not getting a tax cut. They're getting, uh, in most cases, a, a tax increase, either in what they owe or in, uh, in the smaller refund compared to what they, they used to be getting. Vermont, uh, last session when, when I wasn't there, took some steps in Vermont's uh, income tax uh, codes uh, to try to alleviate a little bit of that uh, can't do very much, but that's a, that's an issue that people are um, are, are feeling as they, as they do their own uh, taxes uh, at this point. The, the the tax bill that the previous Congress passed was a pretty significant um, uh, shift in the in the tax burden onto uh, uh, people like that. Um, so that's another example of, of what's happening at the federal level that we in Vermont need to decide, can we do anything about that? How much, and if we can, how much can we, can we do? Thanks. Good morning. I'm Dave Iacovoni. Pleased to be here. Uh, I sit on the Appropriations Committee and in that committee, many, many initiatives, many ideas, proposals come through and we get a chance to review them. From, from where I sit, I see Vermont as a, a state in transition. Our small schools, as you know, are at peril. Uh, several of our small hospitals are struggling to be viable. Our small stores in our rural communities are closing. Our small farms are disappearing. These are huge problems. And in part, I think they're probably happening all over rural America. But to me, um, there's a saying, I know it's true. It says, together, everyone achieves more. I know because it's on your wall. But, but to me, I'm not sure we're together. It feels in many instances that we're divided and we're left to go it on our own. And sometimes in the Vermont spirit of rugged individualism, that works. But in other times, that community coming together from all across the state is needed. There's a proposal I'm looking at with a pretty um, jaundiced view, if you will, Last year, there was an initiative approved, several million dollars, it's back again, to give up the five to $10,000 to people so they'll come to Vermont. I'm not a fan of that. I wanna take those dollars and invest them in us, for people who are here to help us, to be resilient, to be able to thrive, and to do it together. Frankly, to be honest, and, and you know this, two or three million dollars isn't gonna do it. But it's a start, it moves us in the right direction. I worry about two Vermonts, a Chittenden County that's robust in every way uh, imaginable, economically, and the rest of us who are left on our own. 
It troubles me deeply. I don't pretend to have all the answers, but I'm focused on it and try to do my best. I've brought along, and I know Avram did too, uh, my town meeting report. It's in the back on a little stool there, but on the back side is a poll. And I'd really appreciate it if you have time to fill it out so I can get a, a read of the temperature of what people might think. It's not scientific at all, but I'd, I'd love your input because in these positions, we think we know, it depends on the last person you spoke to sometimes. I'm gonna ask uh, without indulging too much if I can leave the poll here. Diana, if you'd be so kind to maybe pick it up and I'll communicate with you after and get it later this week. Thank you so much for your time. I know we're standing between you and I think lunch. <laughs> I learned a long time ago that's not a good position to be in. One other thing I wanted to mention before we take questions. Um, early in the session, Dave and I uh, hosted two Saturday morning uh, coffees where we just invited people to show up and sit around the table and talk. We did that in uh, Morrisville and in Worcester. It was easy to do there because there were cafes and all we needed to do was get the owners okay and, and, that, and that was fine. I uh, will point out that there were two citizens of Woodbury that made it all the way to Worcester uh, for, the, for the Worcester session. Um, we would like to do that uh, in Woodbury. Uh, if someone can help us organize that by a place and a coffee set up, uh, we'll, we will be there. Uh, and you don't have to volunteer right now, but let us know. Retta. I have about three questions, which should be really quick. Um, the first one is about H57, the abortion bill that was just passed. I'm not asking you to explain your votes, but what I would like to know from both of you is do you know what happens during a second and third trimester abortion to the fetus, especially one that's viable? Do you know how they're aborted? When you voted, do you know how they're aborted? So you heard that they inject the heart with potassium chloride or dismemberment. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. My second question is about Proposition 5, and I don't know if it goes to the House. I don't know, we've never lived through a constitutional amendment. I was hoping there's a senator here, but I do have a question about that one. In the uh, purpose of the statute, or purpose of the, I paper here. It says the core value reflected in Article 7 of the U.S. Constitution, oh, Vermont Constitution, is that all people should be afforded all the benefits and protections, and this is not the direct quote from this, the, the U.S. Constitution. Let me start over. They're saying that Article 7 is that all people should be afforded all the benefits and protections bestowed by the government, that the government should not confer special advantages upon the privileged. This is not from the Vermont Constitution. Who are the privileged? It's, it's in their bill. It's, it's who are the privileged. Sorry, I'm she's a senator here. Because um, I want to know who the privileged are. It says that government should not confer special advantages upon the privileged. Okay. Is that a Senate bill? It's a Senate bill. That's why I said I wish there was a Senate I'm, here. I apologize. I'm not familiar with it. Well, when I don't it, know the context. When it gets to you, pay, you know, look at that, because this is what the Vermont Constitution actually says. Um, the government is, or ought to be, instituted for the common benefit, protection, and security of the people, nation, or community, and not for the particular emolument emo or advantage of any single person, family, or set of persons who are part of only that community. So. The Constitution is saying, you can't do this special group here and this special group there. We're supposed to provide benefit, protection, security for everyone. So that's why I'm asking in this Senate bill, who are the privileged? Because as near as I can tell from the Constitution, we are all privileged. It is all of us. I don't care what your political or ideological point of view is, so why are they choosing to use the word privileged in the purpose of the proposal? Because, uh, anyway, thank you. That was it. Thank you. 
making a list of people who want to speak in order. Eric, you're next. Thank you, Ibram and David. I appreciate the service you're doing to this town. I realize it is one of the most important services that we have as a governing society. Um, and uh, I, I agree with the, the, the previous community member that it is very important for us all to know where we come from if we're going to continue with this form of governance. So in terms of knowing what this state constitution says and what part you play in it, and also, even more importantly, what the town charters say, how these towns were chartered and, and, and brought from from where they came to where they are now. Because this is the most powerful place of this government, is right here, this meeting today. That we are the body. We are the people that are requesting you to go out and represent our needs to be a supportive, loving community, to make sure that nobody is left behind. That if we're one for all, all for one. And so we put great trust in you when you go out into the great morass of Montpelier and further and you are consumed by what seems to be an out of control corporate monetary world where you have lobbyists vying for your attention when, when your attention is here with us. And so I want to just, just thank you for, for doing the best you can and, and, and reviewing these important foundation documents which everything we have now is built on and understanding that perhaps we've lost sight of the living natural beings that we are in this living natural world and that perhaps we have deadened it by monetizing it and trying to extract value where the value is not appropriately placed. That all the value starts with us, the living beings, the ones who create the word, the ones who give you the trust to go where you go to represent us. And we would like to have that share come back to us in this time. Thank you. Mary, you're next. I'd like to know how many lobbyists are currently in Montpelier. Okay. There's a, approximately 600 registered lobbyists. That's. And how many people live in Woodbury? 800, 900, 900. Pretty good numbers. They don't they don't balance. Um, I want to know what the legislature and the Senate, or the legislative body, is going to do about the prolific rise of lobbyists in this state. Who's paying for these lobbyists? Who pays for the lobbyists? Lobbyists are hired essentially by special interests to represent their views. So Monsanto would hire lobbyists to lobby you guys? Okay. If, now I want to switch to another question. If we can't expect the citizens of, say, Woodbury or Hardwick or Marshfield to afford improved infrastructure like broadband, roads that have paint that last a full year, trucks that go up and down, gouging holes in the pavement, that now you see people driving like this instead of in a straight line. How do you expect us to afford that? The companies have made record profits, record profits. Under Trump's administration, regulations have been stripped. It is wild west, and we can't get a utility company to extend broadband up a couple of miles on a dirt road. It's really, it's an insult to our intelligence. And record profits, shrinking middle class, taxes going up. So why could, don't they do us a service? Aren't they here to service us? Isn't that the point of utilities? We pay them a fee every month or a bill every month and they're supposed to supply us with electricity or phone service. What, what does it take? I mean, it is logical, is it not, that the company should pay for the privilege 
of doing business here in Vermont. And everything, if you've noticed, is, is continually being thrown back on the taxpayers. Everything. He promised us a tax cut. What did we get? Very small tax returns. Refunds. So, <laughs> do something. We elected you to do something. We didn't elect you to hobnob. We didn't elect you to lobby or have go to lunches. We elected you to do something. So do it. You're smart guys. Is politics really that sacrosanct that you can't just do the right thing? If, Go for it. Then we'll reelect you. Uh, I, I want to say two things. One, one about lobbyists. You should know that of the several hundred lobbyists, a whole lot of them are working for the Vermont Low Income Advocacy Council, for the mental health centers, uh, for nonprofits, and for, for good causes as well. I was, uh, many years ago, when I, uh, when I was at, White well, not that many years ago, when I was at Washington Electric Co-op, I was the registered lobbyist uh, for Washington Electric Co-op. So uh, there, there are people uh, who uh, are, feel that it's important to be represented at, at the State House as we go about uh, our work. Uh, that doesn't mean there aren't some lobbyists that, that are uh, paid a huge amount of money uh, to protect uh, corporate interests that are not necessarily in the, in the public interest. And personally, um, I, uh, I take everything everybody says to me with, uh, with a grain of salt. Uh, specifically about uh, broadband, um, Electric utilities uh, in, in Vermont and elsewhere are regulated, fully regulated utilities. They have a franchise and a service territory that's defined. No other company can serve that territory. What comes with that is being very heavily regulated. Believe me, I know that. And secondly, you must serve everybody in that territory. That's an electric utility. Broadband, by federal law, internet, is not regulated, period. It is not regulated. And there are different technologies that, uh, that can provide broadband. You can get broadband on a phone line. You can get it from a cable company. You can get it fiber. You can get it wireless. None of that, um, uh, it, none of that is regulated. It, I don't like that. But I'm just trying to explain that, that that is the main reason why we, many of us in Vermont, including myself and my own home, uh, don't have uh, decent broadband. Uh, what we're trying to do uh, in Vermont is, is, is work around that obstacle uh, that's put in the way by federal law at the uh, Federal Communications Commission. Patrick, you have your hand. Uh, my name is Patrick Flood. I think I know both of you gentlemen. Uh, I have two things I'd like to say, but I'm only going to say one at a time. If I get a chance, Mr. Moderator, maybe I can come back. But the first question I want to ask is, what is the legislature doing to tackle climate change? I, it is, it's, it's unbelievable to me that we are not acting as if this is a huge problem, which it is. And it may not be that big a problem for us today. It may look like an inconvenience to us today. But I have three kids, and now I have a grandchild. And what we're leaving them is going to be a horrible mess. And nobody even seems to talk about it. I don't hear the governor talking about it. I don't hear the legislature talking about it. I am extremely disappointed in the leadership in the legislature. So I'd just like to know what is being done and what are the plans? Because we are, 20 years from now, we are really gonna regret not having done more sooner. Thank you, Patrick. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, as to what's being done, both Avram and I are on the Climate Caucus with about maybe 40 or 50 other people working on leadership, trying to get the changes that we need. Right now, the um, 
primary focus is on how to dramatically increase what's known as the weatherization program. I won't get into the details, but buttoning up our homes, we have the oldest housing stock in the, in the country, and that's probably the most effective thing we, we can do. Secondarily to that is a question on the uh, Volkswagen settlement funds and working with the Transportation Committee, how to make a, a real a bona fide commitment toward electric vehicles. The uh, money now in the budget, to me, I call it, it's just window dressing so somebody can put on their brochure that they ha had a proposal. It's nowhere near enough. Um, I, I, I guess the leadership um, on this issue has to come from rank and file lawmakers who say, I went to town meeting and this is what I heard. We need to act, we need to do something. Uh, in Vermont, um, our uh, fossil fuel use is, comes from um, two, two basic areas. The one is um, heat, thermal heat, heating our homes, heating this building, um, and, and, and things like that. And in terms of weatherization, and many years ago in, in state government, um, I ran the weatherization program. Uh, there were proposals to first double the number of homes that are being weatherized in the low-income weatherization program, and at the same time, um, uh, extend the, this technology, and it is, it is high-tech, very cost-effective payback, quick payback work, to extend that uh, to people who are perhaps a bit above the income eligibility for, for weatherization um, uh, uh, as well. But basically to do that and double the number of homes in, in the, in the um, low income sector. Uh, that's about, uh, if I remember right, a third, a quarter to a third of the, of the fossil fuel use. The rest basically is transportation. And we're rural, and so people, we all drive more miles than people do in other places, and there isn't a whole lot of public transportation except in certain parts of the, of the state. Um, I can tell you uh, that the, 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 what's, what's the term that's come up is beneficial electrification. When I was early on at Washington Electric Co-op, uh, we were trying to get people to stop using electricity and use propane for your water heat because electricity is not an efficient way to heat electricity, uh, to heat water. There is new technology in both transportation uh, and in, in heating that is, that is very different. And so now the move is to get people to use, to move to electrification, provided of course that the source of that electricity is renewable. If it's not, then we're not, we're, not, we're not doing much. I can tell you from watching this that while electric vehicles may not be ready for prime time for everybody, especially in rural areas today, um, the, the speed at which this technology is advancing in five years, I think it will be. In five years, you will have uh, the, you will be seeing a four-wheel drive uh, pickup trucks for those people that need need a pickup truck for their work or whatever. You'll see the equivalent of uh, my Subaru, um, uh, uh, and and that and electrified transportation is is on the horizon for a very large number of people. The question is not just helping people get those vehicles, but it's also. Um, uh, charging and, and it, I call it commercialization of charging. Yes, you can charge at home, but we need to be able to basically pull into and fill up um, at a station. And, and in fact, the fuel dealers in Vermont know that and are starting to think about can we can we set up uh, high voltage fast charging facilities at, at gas stations so it'll be the same. Until that kind of thing happens, then it, people are going to be limited. I can drive to work and back in my electric vehicle, but if I have to go to Brattleboro and back, I, you know, I can't. So th those are the kind of issues that are, if we can crack that nut on transportation, uh, then we have cracked the, the big nut in Vermont. Mike, you had your hand up. 
Susan, I'm going to recognize Mike. Yeah, John, I, I realize there's no such thing as a free lunch. And, and uh, uh, the question I have is, is along the lines where, where Patrick started. And, uh, and it's dealing with the uh, carbon tax, if you will. Uh, I realize that sometimes referred to as the state of Chittenden uh, has a, a lesser impact and on than it does the people in our rural areas. So with that being said, and understanding the responsibility that we have to our children and grandchildren and those who will follow us, what is your take, each of you, on the, and, and I realize that it's almost like a shell game. It's either the carbon tax, a carbon fee, but we all know it comes down to that, that, that one issue. I'd like to know what your stance is on that and, and how you feel it would affect the people in your districts. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I just had testimony on this this week. I, I, have, uh, I have leaned towards, in the past, wanting to support a, a carbon tax because I understood the benefits of it. And as Patrick said, our house is on fire. We need to do something. I waited, though, because we commissioned a study to be done last year, which I waited for the study to be completed to see what it said. A and the study, essentially, demonstrates that in order to change behavior, the carbon tax would have to be far, far higher than anybody has proposed. A nickel doesn't do it. A dime doesn't do it. A quarter doesn't do it. We're talking at least a dollar or more to start changing our behavior for, for fossil fuels. It's exceedingly regressive on a, on a rural state that relies on transportation. Having said that, however, and, and the benefits from the carbon tax, the yield on it are, I don't want to say insignificant, but in comparison to the programs like weatherization and the electric vehicles and other efforts we can do, um, those are the real game changers. So then the conversation shifts to, how do you fund it? I do, I do not want to tax ordinary, hardworking Vermonters more. I will, however, be the first to stand, to, first, but I, I will stand at the podium and I'll say, you know, there's 4,800 Vermonters who make on average more than $1.1 million a year, who are the beneficiaries annually of an excess of $33,000 in federal tax cuts. I don't think those Vermonters will bolt and leave their grandkids in the beauty of Vermont if we took some of that. And if we did, we could, if we took 3,000, roughly, of their 33,000 in new federal tax windfalls, where most of all the tax breaks went to, and invested in Vermont, and we'd raise 12 to $16 million, we'd be able to do the weatherization. So I'm, I, I may be in the minority on that. It may not be popular, but our house is on fire. We have to do something. The revenues will come from somewhere. That's what I'm looking at. The, uh, there are actually two studies that the legislature now has about uh, a carbon price or a carbon tax. Um, one was uh, uh, released uh, early this session, and was, I would say it was a very high-level kind of uh, thing. The, uh, um, the legislature asked uh, an organization called the Regulatory Assistance Project, which is based in Montpelier, works internationally, uh, but has a very high percent of former state uh, utility regulators on it to take a, a sort of deeper look. That just came out last week. There was a summary briefing to the Climate Caucus that I sat through. They'll be in our committee uh, in a week or two. Um, and what they said was that trying to do this simply by sending a very high price signal doesn't work, and they gave examples of that from uh, uh, other countries. S raising money to spend it on things that work, um, that does work. Weatherization works. Electrification of, the, of transportation is starting to work, so we need to spend money on the things that 
we need to do to, to make it work for, for, for everybody. Um, so th there is a revenue question. It does cost money. Uh, our committee recommended to the Appropriations Committee uh, that we double uh, weatherization. Um, it's, it's not our job or their job either to in terms of committees to figure out how, do, how are you going to raise, raise that money. Um, I have my own preferences, but I, I, as in my experience in the legislature, is I, I argue for look, we need to do this, and I will accept any reasonable way that other people come up to, to, pay, to pay for that. There is a revenue question, but it is not, it's simply how much is it going to cost to weatherize the, those homes? How much is it going to cost um, to give people incentives to purchase electric vehicles? How much is it going to cost to um, uh, build out a, 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 a fuller charging system across the state? Let's raise the revenue that's necessary to do those things rather than trying to um, uh, send, send a market price signal because that doesn't seem to be that effective based on experience in other places. Hi, um, I'm Sarah Van Hoff. I read your posts in the forum all the time and I've seen this as a byline, but I think it's one thing that um, that needs to be kind of brought up together with the whole broadband topic and that's cell phone service. I. You know, we can have broadband all over the place, but if I'm in my backwoods, actually if I'm in my yard, and something happens, you know, I'm not gonna be able to connect to my broadband. And, and if I invite family and friends, and I say, by the way, there's no cell phone service at my house, they're appalled so to, to attract people to, to the area, and for the safety of all of us who spend a lot of time outside not near enough our broadband to connect, um, I think that cell phone service is really important. <laughs> Sir. Are you a registered voter or resident? I'm a resident. Maybe you need to do that as a vote. No, I don't know. Not a registered voter. I'm afraid I'll have to decline unless two thirds. Unless two thirds of the body give you permission. Your name, sir? Bryn. My name is Bryn Paul. So, what's your pleasure with uh, Mr. Paul's uh, <clears throat> request? Let's take two thirds, not a majority, two thirds to suspend the rules. All those in favor <clears throat> of permitting uh, Mr. Paul to speak, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. I think that's two thirds. I think the ayes have it. Mr. Paul? On the topic of climate change, I cannot, in my conscience, uh, not bring up the role of climate engineering. It's Controversial, but it's undeniable for everybody who looks into it. Beyond fact at this point, uh, climate engineering has been taking place for at least 50 years, and many of the signs of so-called man-made climate change that we're all being blamed for are actually uh, government and military technology. You can look at geoengineeringwatch.org. It lays out, I mean, the, government officials admitting this, this isn't even a, it's not being hidden, it's just not being publicized. So the argument about carbon, all this stuff is completely nullified until we get the facts on climate engineering. So the second thing I wanna say is uh, in response to the blaming of politicians for all the bad stuff that's happening, we need to take full responsibility. That's how all the problems in the country are the way they are. Everyone wants to point a finger. Every time you buy something on Amazon Prime, that's a vote for Chittenden County being in good shape and us not being in good shape. So keep that in mind. Susan, do you wish to be recognized? Recognized Bob. <laughs> 
Thank you for escorting him to the microphone. Okay, I have uh, two concerns. Step up to the microphone. Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, there was a meeting here, not here, but at the, uh, the old town hall, where there was a uniformed state police officer who came to visit. And I was surprised at the turn. And I thought quite a few people were very upset that uh, there was not response. There was things going on, everybody knows about it, nothing's being done. And what they were hearing was, well, just call 911. Everybody call. Keep calling them. And keep calling them. And uh, I'm reminded of the accident that where somebody on a cell phone, three or four cars back on the Barry Montpelier Road, accordion to a whole bunch of cars into us. So my wife gets out of the car and gets on the phone, calls 911. Can you hold, please? What? You aren't supposed to say, can you hold, please? Oh, and she was mad. <laughs> and I don't know if that was before or after the time. They just hung up on her. Didn't get through. So I, I, I just put that behind me. And think. Then we have an incident, an episode, where there's two burning structures Individuals laying on the floor with bullet holes in them. I don't know how many dogs were laying there with bullet holes in them. Two black SUVs with four individuals in each one coming down East Hill. And I don't know if I, I wasn't there, but what I understand was there was a call made to 911. Guess what happened? Attitude. Couldn't believe it. Attitude. They weren't going to send the state police. Can you put me through to the night watch, Commander? And they did. And I guess finally, the state police were on their way. There's something wrong with E911. And it isn't that there isn't an 11 key on the phone pad. There, it seems to be no way to get at them, to have them do what we think they're doing. I think the legislature, even as, I, as the article I read in Vermont Digger yesterday, even you guys can't do anything. You can't even find out who the contractor is that they're making, a, that they're going to sign with before the end of the month. What is going on? You know, this isn't even a, an issue of cell service. This is an issue of who's, who's answering the phone. And there seems to be a tremendous effort, from what I can see, to gatekeep. We've got to filter out these calls, because there'd be too many of them. And the state police guy that was here was asked more than once, and I felt so sorry for him because it was very evident that he would be retaliated against if he said anything to the effect, we need help, we need more people. There's only three state police covering 17 towns all the way from Williamstown to Warren to Cabot and 30 miles of interstate. They can't do it. They need help. I don't know what goes on in legislature that relates to the state police, but something isn't right. It's got to be fixed. And I don't know what goes on with a contract or the rules or the legislation with the E911, but it sure sounded like something was missing there and it wasn't going to be getting fixed for quite a while. It's lunchtime. That's all Bob, I will say. you yield to let uh, the representatives respond if sure. they care to respond? Uh, 
I'll respond. I mean, from what I'm hearing, I, I, I'm, there, there's, there's two different issues. One is the capacity of the state police to serve rural areas, even if they, if, you know, if you call in and the call gets through, uh, they're spread very thin, and I think we, we, we know that, and that's a, a, re, a resource question of have basically how many uh, troopers are we going to pay to be on duty at, at, at any given time. Uh, the E911 issue, at least at a technical level, that is in my committee, and we have heard testimony uh, about the past uh, past problems, the company that uh, that couldn't um, finish the, the work and all of that. If you would like to um, let me know, my email is on my uh, uh, report that's on, on uh, in the back. Give me uh, details about the uh, you know the actual experience, the difficulty of getting through uh, to people uh, answering the phone, which sounds like a, not so much a a technical, technological issue, but what happened when you did talk to somebody, um, I can follow up on that. Thank you. Bob, uh, th thank you. Uh, I don't diminish that problem at all. It's probably one of the public safety. If government can't keep us safe, what can it do? But my point is, uh, whenever there's a big storm, raw sewage is going into our waters. You go into a hospital emergency room, there's people in, in mental health crisis backed up for days. Um, you can look at almost any part of state government and, it's, and the rubber band is stretched to the max. Um, and the, our capacity to solve that all at once does not exist. We have to try to re-engineer the programs we have, to audit them, to change those that aren't working but we also have to have the courage to stand up and say, we need more revenues in targeted areas from people who can afford to give it. Until we do that, next year or the next time there's a meeting, it'll be a different topic where somebody um, eloquently explains how the system is broken. And um, until we do that, you know, the definition, what is it, you keep doing the same thing over and over again, doesn't work. Uh, these uh, representatives have another stop to make in Worcester, and uh, they have kindly uh, uh, been with us for about 40 minutes. So unless there's uh, any further questions, I think uh, we'd like to thank David. Can I, can I follow up with one thing? Eric? Can I just follow up with one last thing? If you could make it brief, please. I just find it interesting how we dance around these truths that we are self-evident. Our Pledge of Allegiance to this flag here, to the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands. To the Republic for which it stands. We have to understand where we've come from. If we are going to switch this around to some democratic process that overlays a Republic, in a Republic we control the charters of corporations. We put life first. In a democracy, we allow revenue streams to come out of disaster capitalism. This is where we are. As representatives, you need to hold these truths to be self-evident, that we are a republic. That's what we say when we pledge allegiance to that flag. And that if we are going to allow corporate charters to run our lives, they have no feelings and they do not recognize life. We recognize life, you recognize the life from us, you represent that life, you don't represent the revenue stream. Thank you, Eric. And uh, with that, I think we should let these guys go to make their next trip. And, uh, Thank you for having us. Well, we're up to uh, Article 10, and it's almost high noon. Uh, does somebody want to make a, a suggestion? Uh, you, Peter. Let's see. Let's see. All right, if there's no objection, we'll uh, take uh, 
half an hour for lunch. It's 12.30, and we're in recess until 12.30. We left off at Article 10. Article 10. Paul Cerruti. I make a motion we consolidate Article 10 and Article 34. Second. Second. There's a motion made to consolidate Article 10 to Article 34 into one motion. It's been moved and seconded. Who made the second? David. David. Is there any discussion? Eric. I just want to reiterate that all of these appropriations, again, um, as far as I can see, come from uh, what we would call corporate entities who have the ability to access funds uh, directly from other corporate entities, including the U.S. government, which holds all the value that we have created from our ancestors in trust, and that rather than us giving out more appropriations, we, we should encourage these, these corporate entities to go directly to the pile of revenue that we've already created rather than taxing us even more. Is there any further discussion? <clears throat> Any further discussion? Mary Ganjimi. I'd like to propose that we give the Sylvia Jackson Fund an additional $500 and also to Family Center of Washington County, if we can give them a bump up to a 250 Okay, so I propose that the town would very appropriate As I was reading Robert's Rules last night, strangely, right before I fell asleep, <laughs> um, I was kind of anticipating something like this. And according to the rules, uh, uh, I have the authority to uh, treat as separate from a consolidated motion at the request of an individual um, the, uh, to take out those two articles and treat them separately. So, uh, if you, Paul, will consent to uh, amending your motion without objection uh, to move articles 10 through 34, I think you said, except articles 14 and 22, then we'll proceed with that. Is there a second to that? All right. Clarification, you're going to be voting on the larger number first? Yes, we're going to be voting on articles 10 through 34 first, without 14 and 22, and then we'll return and discuss, uh, take up 14 and 22 separately. All right. Any further discussion? Carol. I just want the town to be aware that um, our expenses at the food shelf exceed our income, and down the line, I have to do some kind of movement to increase the money I'm requesting from the town. So as the article reads, I'd like it to stand this year, but I just want the town to know 
that uh, the Woodbury Food Shop has been here since 1995. We serve a lot of people in three towns, and everything goes up, so our expenses are, and um, it's not sustainable. And I guess I'm <coughs> being a little proactive, I don't want to ask for any more money. But, I'm assuming uh, you accept donations from individuals. Yes, absolutely. Uh, oh, yeah, I can accept any donation from any individual, any time, and or food. But, um, we're not sustaining the way we are. Our donations are erratic, they go up and down, and we ask very little. We had a formula we used from the Vermont Food Bank, which did not include, and it's becoming clearer as a bell now, that our expenses exceed, and we weren't including our expenses when we did that formula in previous letters that have been written to the town. So just next year, um, there may be a bigger request. That's all I'd like to say. Thanks. Is there any other discussion? Uh, if not, I, I regret that I'm going to have to afflict you with reading every one of these for this motion. Article 10 of the consolidated motion. Shall the town appropriate $12,000 for the support of the Woodbury Community Library? Article 11. Shall the town appropriate $7,000 for the support of the Woodbury Cemeteries? Article 12, shall the town appropriate $1,000 for the Friends of Woodbury Elementary School? Article 13, shall the town appropriate $540 to the Woodbury Callus Food Shelf? Article 14 will be treated separately. Article 15, shall the town appropriate $750 to aid to women, men, and children in abuse and rape emergency? That's the uh, emergencies, that's the AWARE organization. Article 16, shall the town appropriate $250 to the American Red Cross of New Hampshire and Vermont? Article 17, shall the town appropriate $600 to the Central Vermont Adult Basic Education? Article 18, shall the town appropriate $750 to the Central Vermont Council on Aging? Article 19, shall the town appropriate $300 to the Central Vermont Economic Development Corporation? Article 20, shall the town appropriate $2,000 to the Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice Incorporated. Article 21, shall the town appropriate $650 to circle the uh, battered woman services group. Article 22 will be treated separately. Article 23, shall the town appropriate $484 to the Green Mountain Transit. Article 24, shall the town appropriate $50 to Green Up Vermont. Article 25, shall the town appropriate $300 to the Hardwick Area Community Justice Center. Article 26, shall the town appropriate $750 to Hardwick Community Television. Article 27, shall the town appropriate $200 to our house of Central Vermont. Article 28, shall the town appropriate $100 to the People's Health and Wellness Clinic. Article 29, shall the town appropriate $200 to the Sexual Assault Crisis Team. Article 30, shall the town appropriate $1,000 to the Twin Valley Senior Center? Article 31, shall the town appropriate $210 to the Vermont Center for Independent Living? Article 32, shall the town appropriate $100 to the Vermont Rural Fire Protection Task Force for the Dry Hydrant Program? Article 33, shall the town appropriate $1,000 to Washington County Mental Health Services? Article 34, Shall the town appropriate $500 to the Washington County Youth Service Bureau? If you vote aye, you are in favor of making those appropriations. If you vote no, you do not favor making those appropriations. Ginger, point of order, I hope. I think I close discussion with consent of the body. Uh, without objection, we'll hear your question. No one's objected.
I think there's a legislative uh, piece of that, too. Okay. It's not obvious. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank very well, then we'll proceed uh, with the vote uh, to repeat. If you vote aye, you're voting in favor of the appropriations in Articles 10 through 34, except for Articles 14 and 22. If you vote no, you do not approve of those appropriations. Okay, we'll move to the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and those articles, Articles 10 through 34, are passed, with the exception of uh, Articles 14 and 22, which we'll take up right now. <laughs> what is your pleasure with respect to Article 14? Article 14. Peter. Can I ask the select board, how, how has the Sylvia Fund been applied? Okay. Uh, I think we, we need to move the uh, motion first. Before we get there. Is there a second? Second. Article 14 has been moved and seconded. Uh, please listen to the article. Shall the town appropriate $1,000 to the Sylvia Jackson Fund? Peter. So, again, uh, what's happening with that? I, um, I, I would defer to Mary. She oversees that fund. Uh, it's my understanding that it really hasn't been used at all this year, but Mary might know better. Mary and Jim. Yes. We have, in fact, helped several people this year with um, emergency payments and fuel. Are you making a motion to amend the article to, uh, for an appropriation of $1,500? I am, yes. Is there a second to that amendment? There's a second. And, All again, right. and again, the Sylvia Jackson Fund um, was established in uh, 1928, I believe. It's long-standing, and it's specifically for the residents of Woodbury. Read page 60 of your report. Page 60 of your yes. report. Page 60 of the report. Jackie Pills. I just yeah, wanted to ask Mary a question, because you're asking for 1000 and now you're up to about 500 and I just wondered why. I, I mean, I know last year it was 1000 also. Okay. So I'm asking this year. Well, last year was about, it's a yearly appropriation. Yeah. Yeah. How much was used last year? How much was used last year? Uh, 500 plus. Page 45. Page 45. Yeah, but you know what? I think this is incorrect. 1,222. Yeah. Page 45. Yeah. Thank you. Any further discussion on the amendments? Susan. Although I support the amendment of increasing this to $500, there are many of us here in Woodbury that are getting elderly and unfortunately living alone. But also as an auditor, I must remind the town that we recommended to level fund all these monies that are being donated. Um, thank you. Any more discussion on Article 14, the Sylvia Jackson Fund? On the amendment to Article 14. If not, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to vote on the amendment. If you approve of the amendment, that becomes the main motion. If you don't approve of the amendment, then we're going to go back to the original Article 14. Okay? Then the second step is, we're going to vote on the amendment as the main motion, if you approve of it, okay? So first things first, the first thing we're gonna do is vote on the amendment. If you are in favor, if you are in favor of increasing the appropriation to $1,500, I'll ask you to say aye. If you're against increasing the appropriation to 
$1,500, I'll ask you to say no. Everybody clear on what the impact of their vote is going to be? Yes is $1,500 and no $1,000. Okay, are you ready for the vote? Ready for the vote. All those in favor of the amendment to uh, the appropriation to be $1,500 to the Sylvia Jackson Fund, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and the amendment passes. Now, the main motion will be, shall the town appropriate $1,500 to the Sylvia Jackson Fund? $1,500 to the Sylvia Jackson Fund. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Is there any discussion? on the main motion as amended. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the vote. In this case, if you approve of the article, which is to appropriate $1,500 to the Sylvia Jackson Fund, say aye. aye. Not yet, you guys. <laughs> I, I like to build a suspense, I'm saying. If you do not agree that that sum should be appropriated to the Sylvia Jackson Fund, say no, okay? So this is an up or down vote. All right, we'll proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Article 14, as amended, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. No. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the article as amended is passed. Let's move to Article 22. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 22? Is there a motion? Article 22 is moved. Is there a second? And seconded. Please uh, listen to Article 22. Shall the town appropriate $100 to the Family Center of Washington County? That's the question. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion of Article 22? I have a question. I'd just like to know um, if there's somebody here who can represent what that organization does and why they need more money than they asked for. Like Susan mentioned, we've been very strict with organizations who want to increase their allocation. Uh, just as a point of order, the article is for $100. If, if that amount is going to be changed, there has to be an amendment to the motion. Okay? So the, the question before uh, the body is, uh, shall $100 be appropriated to the Family uh, Center of Washington County? $100. Is there any further discussion? Susan. Uh, please review page 69 if you'd like any further information from the Family Center of Washington County. And um, I stand before you uh, to let you know something in my past that I was, um, my husband and I used the Family Center of Washington County for our daughter. And uh, they're very, very helpful uh, to, to us, particularly for me. Um, I was... They pointed out to me that I was the adult in this situation, which was news to me. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Is there any further discussion on Article 22? Mary. In speaking to the services that Washington County Family Center, or the Family Center of Washington County provides, early childhood education, and they also have services for the most severely disabled, developmentally delayed children. They go out of their way to make sure that these kids get the care that they need to even begin to thrive. And uh, the government is now looking, to, the feds are looking to cut back their budget by 1.2 million, I think, so they could really use some support. Is there any further discussion on Article 22? 
the appropriation to the Family Center of Washington County. Here, any further discussion? Then we'll proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Article 22, if you're in favor of the appropriation, I'll ask you to say aye. If you're against the appropriation and don't want it to be made, say no. Please listen to the article before you vote. Shall the town appropriate $100 to the Family Center of Washington County? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And that brings us to Article 35. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 35 of the warning? Is there a motion? Is there an, a motion to budget an amount for the town to pay expenses next year? Um, I would like to make a motion um, that we um, appropriate $259,689.03. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, to Article 35, please listen to the article. What amount shall be budgeted to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for general purposes for the period from July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2020? I, um, Stephen, I read the wrong number. You have to add the 500 that was agreed upon to the city of Jackson. Oh, I have to add $500? Okay. Um, Here's your Hang on, we have to do For some those work. who did not read Robert's Rules of Order last night, <laughs> apparently the philosophy is that the person who makes the motion owns the motion, and it has to be moved and seconded, and then I have to read it, and then you own it. But while I haven't done that, the move person who made the motion is free to reel it back in and propose a modification. And I think we're about to get that. Okay, so there's a little confusion on the number that I should be reading. Um, that's my confusion, I'm sorry. Um, so what amount should be budgeted to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for general purposes for the period from July 1st 2019 to June 30, 2020. Shall the select board be authorized to set a tax rate sufficient to provide the same? Um, the general government expense total, um, the total expenses for both the general government and the higher expense total is $982,551.50. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting, one ear I'm getting one thing and then the other ear I'm getting the other. So I'm this article is only for the general expenses. The highway fund okay. is the next article. We're not raising, the only amount we are raising is after the revenue. That's what I thought. Okay, so we need to add dollars to that. So I believe the number would be the shortfall. Is that what I should be reading? Yeah, the shortfall. That's what I found. Okay. So, um, so let me do the addition again. Sorry. Um, it's 260, 189.03. So the amount that we need to raise is 261. Oh. 260, 189. Hang on, I need to do it. Okay, so the amount would be $260,000, $189.03. 
I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Um, I thought I was. The treasurer assures me that that's the correct amount. Yes, 260 thousand one hundred and eighty nine dollars and three cents is there that's a second poll all right please listen to the article as presented and and what amount shall be budgeted to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for general purposes for the period from July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2020, and shall the select board be authorized to set a tax rate sufficient to provide the same, and the amount is $260,189.03. Did I say 260, Vail? Would you repeat it? Yes. Um, I'll give it to you in single numbers first. Two, six, zero, comma, one, eight, nine, point, oh, three, two hundred sixty thousand, one hundred eighty nine dollars and three cents. Is there any discussion? Susan. I would just like to follow in the annual report where we are and where that figure is or is proposed to be in the annual report? I'm really confused. I'm so sorry. page 38. Okay. I got it. see how the general government is separate from the highway. Right. Okay. Okay. So okay. if you go down to the second paragraph where it says expenses versus revenues, total general government shortfall, you go over to the right for the proposed budget for mm -hmm. fiscal right. year 2020. Right. Where it states $259,689.03, and you add 500 to it for the increase for the Sylvia Jackson Fund. Yep. And that is the money that is to be raised right. to cover the expenses for the government. Thank you. Thank you. I was just confused. I didn't know what page to look at anymore. <laughs> Norman. Know you people figure this stuff out better than I do, but I, it see the way it's worded. It, it asks what amount shall be budgeted. The budgeted amount is that larger number. The amount to be raised to meet it is that lower amount that was just mentioned. So, in terms of what should be budgeted, it's the larger amount, not that, not the amount to be raised. Is what was just mentioned, I believe. Could you explain that again, Norman, please? Well, well, the article asks what amount shall be budgeted. Um, and if you look at that spreadsheet that's on page 38, it says that the um, total, um, total general government expenses is 461,989, and of course you'd have to add that 500 to it. The total government shortfall is the amount that has to be raised from taxes, but that's not what the article asks. It says the select board will be authorized to set a tax base sufficient to raise that amount, which would be that lower amount, but the amount that's budgeted is that higher amount. This, I believe it's the way it reads. The, the way I read that, Norman, is that um, the amount bud that needs to be budgeted, so the amount that needs to be put in the budget to meet our government expenses is the $260,000 amount. The other comes from different various sources of revenue that the town receives. Your tax rate is going to be set upon that two hundred and sixty thousand. Is everybody following that? There's a budgeted amount in the town report and there's an amount that the town has to raise to meet the budgeted amount. And that amount to raise is $260,189.03. And the budgeted amount we just heard was uh, $461,989. Uh, $461,989, is that correct? 
plus five hundred dollars. Plus five hundred dollars. So I just wanted to come back to this idea of dollars, which we're budgeting for expenses and liabilities here. And I'm going to assume, since we're talking about dollars, we're talking about Federal Reserve notes rather than gold, silver, or bonds. And so my understanding is that Federal Reserve notes are debt notes, that they can only be exchanged <coughs> for debt. And my understanding is that our federal debt is the compilation of all of the transfer of notes that we do every day, thinking that we are paying for something when we're actually just creating debt. And so I'm just uh, concerned that we understand that if we are not responsible for ourselves in this life, and we do need to employ services to be responsible for us, this is the way that we are paying for them, and this is how we accumulate debt. And so anybody who opts out of being assessed taxes for somebody else providing this service to uh, meet these expenses and liabilities, um, know that this is your choice. But you also have the choice under the town charter, under the constitution, under natural law, to take responsibility for yourself and not incur debt through this revenue stream. And if you read the town charter, if you know where we come from, you will understand that. That's why I do not participate as a voter, because I choose to be a proprietor or a free man instead of a tenant on the land who needs the help of some other service. Is there any more discussion on Article 35? Any more discussion on Article 35? We'll proceed to a vote then. Please listen to the article. What amount shall be budgeted to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for general purposes for the period from July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2020? And shall the select board be authorized to set a tax rate sufficient to provide the same? In the uh, discussion, we heard that the uh, Budgeted amount is $461,989 plus $500. And we've also heard that the amount the town must raise uh, to hit that figure is uh, $260,189.03. All those in favor of authorizing the town to set the tax rate to raise that budgeted amount, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. It appears the ayes have it. The ayes have it and Article 35 is passed. Let's move to Article 36. What's your pleasure with regard to Article 36 of the warning? Is there a motion? Is there a second? Please listen to Article 36 of the warning. What amount shall be budgeted to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for highway purposes for the period from July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2020? And shall the select board be authorized to set a tax rate sufficient to provide the same? Is I'll, I'll provide the number, so the total Highway expenses for fiscal year 2020 is $520,062.74. The amount that we need to cover that to raise in taxes is $428,962.74. Peter. I'll pass that on to the road crew. Any further discussion on Article 35? Further discussion on Article 35? 
If not, then we'll proceed to the vote. Please listen to the article you're going to vote on. What amount shall be budgeted to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for highway purposes for the period from July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2020? And shall the select board be authorized to set a tax rate sufficient to provide the same? And uh, the select board has uh, said that the uh, budgeted amount is $520,000 $62.74 and 428,962 dollars and 74 cents is uh, the amount that will have to be raised to meet that figure. If you are in agreement with giving the select board that authority uh, for those amounts, I'm going to ask you to say aye. If you don't agree, I'm going to ask you to say no. So let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Article 36, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Article 36 is passed. Article 37, what is your pleasure? I make the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. This portion. This portion. Well, this is the town meeting. That's doing it. All those in favor of uh, adjourning this meeting. Uh, I have a one quick resolution. That was the word I wanted. This was that uh, when we have election next town meeting uh, of people, we have a blackboard or another board where we can write the names down so we can see who we are voting for so the names are uh, uniform on the ballot. That's the resolution, it's not a motion. So I'll get it in the minutes so we remember next year. <laughs> well, <clears throat> after I fell asleep reading Robert's rules, <laughs> I did have a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote it down. Yeah, and it was that um, the motion uh, to adjourn couldn't be debated or amended. So the resolution is, is neither here nor there, uh, but it's... it's But there usually is an article to transact any other business that may lead to turn well, let me ask you this. There's two-thirds of you must approve of this meeting suspending the ordinary rules of parliamentary procedure. And I think what we can do is take up uh, this motion, this resolution for other business that's not binding before we address this motion, Roy. So, I'm going to ask you, two thirds of you are needed to approve uh, David presenting his resolution, which I'll ask him to repeat. But before we do that, we wanna know if we're gonna to listen to it. All those in favor of hearing, suspending the rules and taking up David's resolution, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, I think that's two thirds. David? It's, it's really just a simple resolution of one where we have multiple candidates for anything. We have a board where we can write down their names so we can see who we're voting for and when we write it on the ballot, it's a uniform name. I guess, I guess this time, some, one, of the, one of the persons names was spelled a variety of ways. I saw it just what I saw. Half of that, I never see my wife's spelling. <laughs> no way I ever. So I think, it's, especially since sometimes we have trouble spelling names or say pronouncing like Barnowski, you know? It's my name. That's it. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Any discussion on this resolution? If not, let's move to vote on the resolution. 
All those in favor of David's resolution to have the names of the nominees written so everyone can see, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes appear to have it. Uh, thank you. It's resolved and duly noted. Now, let's get back to the motion to adjourn. All those in favor, Peter. I'd like to address uh, uh, Norm a question about other business for to the town meeting part. We have, it, unless we can do it on the, under the school to have general questions other than just the school district, I think we should have that as, as an open our questions that haven't been addressed yet for, in regards to the town. I think if you have any questions for this meeting, for other business that could come up before the town that's not binding, then that cannot be addressed at the school district meeting. That has to be addressed at this meeting. So if you want to carve out some time to talk about other business that may be of interest to uh, the body, again, I think we can suspend the rules and do that, but I'm going to have to ask you to do that, and it's going to take two-thirds of you to vote to do that. All right. So, please make uh, your resolution, Peter. I have a resolution that we, we discuss other business, non-binding other business at this time for the town, for town district. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion on the resolution to discuss other business? If not, let's proceed to a vote. All those in favor of that uh, motion, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? All right. So if you want to talk about other business to come before the town, uh, raise your hand and I'll recognize you. Peter. I have a question for the fire department in regards to their need for, for space. And I'm also particularly interested in the Aronson property. What's going to happen to that, and what are your intentions uh, with that? He was just a Callus. So Callus passed their poor portion of our uh, capital fund. So thank you for Callus. Thank you all for your support. Um, so on the Aronson property, as you all know, it got donated to the fire department yes, last year. So we did some. Uh, uh, site studies on it uh, to whether it would be a suitable site and what are the implications of sewer and water and all those things and we have those answers now and we're, we need to just assimilate that information and decide a path forward so we'll be uh, we've invited a member of the Woodbury Select Board the Callis Select Board and we're more than likely going to invite a community member to come on to that so thing one I would have is if someone has an interest in working with us on that come see me or Chance um, I'd, could be a really long conversation about this. So we have the information. Does that be more interesting? I can go into the details. There's been some rumors about if you can't use it, you're going to put up something else and try to sell it. Oh, I don't know where else came from. That hasn't been on the table. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I don't want to get into sewers and water. I can do that. Anyone personally come see us. We'll be glad to talk about it. Um, I'd like to bring you something concrete. There's a lot of what we could do is and maybe what's, and it's just a lot of stuff to sift through right at the moment. So. Uh, thing two, as long as we're on, that answer your question, okay. Any questions, come see Chance or I would be more than happy to answer it. Any rumors, I got an email and, and uh, Chance does too. Just call, you know, I don't like things to run rampant that aren't true and if it's true, we'll tell you about it. <laughs> um, thing two is, uh, as you see, we're putting recruitment posters up everywhere. Uh, the thing that keeps a volunteer organization vibrant and active in the community is volunteers. Uh, some will say, well, I'm too old to volunteer. I don't have anything to offer. Um, I think if you think that you might want to, come down and see us. Or at the very least, if you want to know what's going on, we're there every Tuesday night and come out and just check out what's going on. Um, we have a lot of needs uh, uh, that could be fulfilled that aren't firefighting positions, such as snow removal, such as cutting the grass, such as building maintenance items, which uh, a lot of us have taken a, a couple hundred hours in EMT training this year and all the calls. Uh, if, if someone has some time and would like to come and see how they could fit in to do some of those other things, uh, we'd love to have you come down. An example being after our uh, double homicide incident, after being up for 40 some hours straight, we then had to spend six hours cleaning 
and putting all the equipment away. So there's little things like that that you might could fit in. If you want to be a firefighter or an EMT or somebody that wants to fit in that way, come see us. We have information packets, uh, but that's what it's going to take to keep the organization vibrant. The money's great, but without people, you don't have an organization. And the last thing I have is we're selling the 911 uh, reflective street signs. They're $20 each. If there's an issue with uh, being able to pay for that sign, just see Chance or I. We'd like to see the signs get out. Uh, it, it's difficult, particularly in the wintertime and at night, to uh, uh, find someone having a, a medical crisis or even a fire if it's not visible from the street. Uh, getting that number uh, that's reflective and out where we can see it uh, is important. So thank you. Is there any other business to discuss that's not in the article which may come up? Susan. I'm not gonna promise this is the last time I'm gonna be here, but I do wanna thank the town for spending a, a lot of money on the speed signs. Uh, they are very helpful around the lake. And uh, on behalf of the uh, Woodbury Lake Association and, the, um, and my neighbors around the lake, we thank you so very, very much. Thank you. Is there any other business? Any other business? This might, yes, Brandy. I'd like to take the time to thank Skip Lindsay for the in amount the, of time. In the mic, in the mic. So I'd like to take the time to thank Skip Lindsay for yes. the amount of time he's put into the town um, for numerous projects. How many years, Skip? Well, it's going on 10, but only three. He's, he's not done yet. He's not <laughs> done yet. <laughs> All right. Very well. All right. If there's no further business to come before the meeting, there's the last article, Roy, which is <laughs> the motion to adjourn. It's been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and we'll take uh, a five-minute uh, recess with unanimous consent, and then we'll start the school meeting.